I don't know about you, but I enjoy walking through Scripture. I love studying the Word of God. I, I, I've had a great time. I went through the book of James the entire time that we were away on vacation. And, and just some of the neat things that I personally had to wrestle through and, and dig out of sometimes some of the things that are locked up in my mind. But I'm so grateful that God is faithful that while we're on the journey, he reveals things and he exposes himself and shows us us things. And, and uh, I just want to tell you, I had just a great time in the book of James. And I don't know if you followed me on Facebook or not, but I uh, kind of did a devotional as I walked through the, the, the two weeks. And I'm just so thankful. I, I'm, I, I don't want to take moments like this for granted where we can worship and engage in the presence of God and I don't want to take things for granted where we can just sit around the word for a little while. Um, I'm not interested in that. I'm, in, I'm interested in really digging in and learning because I want my life to be changed. I don't know about you, but, but I grew up in the church all my life and heard truth all my life. Heard the stories, you know, read the pages and colored the books and all the other stuff. But I want to tell you when I encountered God... It changed everything. And you know what the best thing about it is? It keeps changing me. It doesn't keep me stuck in past revelation. It keeps on changing me. You see, my stories get longer and bigger and deeper because I'm walking with God. I continue to grow. So the stories I tell now are going to be different than the stories I told then because I've encountered God in a fresh way. I want to tell you this morning, God is a fresh encountering God. And you don't have to live your life so clean and so right and so focused and so everything in order for him to reveal himself to you because he honors our progress. He honors the steps we take, the things we do, the life we walk, the things we go through. The greatest thing, let me tell you this, this might be a revelation that changed your life, I don't know. But you know what, the greatest things that we learn in life is when we fail. The greatest things we learn in life is when we fail. Think of it for this moment, folks. If you never failed, what would you learn? You wouldn't learn anything. And yet oftentimes, it's our failures that we look down on ourselves. It's when we fail, we look down on other people. Come on, let's be honest. Come on. We look down on other people that failed. But it's in those moments and those opportunities where we can learn some of the most greatest truths when we fail. So let's not look at failure as negative. Let's turn it, let's flip that. Let's turn it around and begin to look at it as an opportunity where where things are going to shift in my life. Yeah, sometimes we make the same mistake over and over again. Guess what? You know what? I hear people tell that all the time too. You know what? It's amazing. People closest around you often will highlight that the most. I remember when I was a young kid, my mom used to tell me that, and she would used to say, you know, when you're pointing the finger, Jeffrey, you have three pointing right back at you. So then I started doing this. <laughs> See? Take all the responsibility off of myself and everything where I'm pointing, right? Why is it, I, I'm talking to myself here, church. I am talking to myself. Why is it so easy to see the wrong in other people and not be open to your own? You know why? Because it's a lot more fun picking at somebody else than ourselves. Come on. Don't look at me like that. I want to take a few moments just to welcome our international audience. If you would put your hands together. I mean, we just heard from, we heard from the Netherlands last week. The Netherlands. How many have ever been to the Netherlands before? See? We just want to welcome our audience that are tuning in with us from all around the world. We're excited that you're part of our church, excited part of our environment. We just want to honor you, and we just are grateful that you are part of us. You've chosen, out of all these different things, you've chosen to plug in and, and, and participate in what's happened here. So we honor you. I want to look at Proverbs chapter 4 this morning. Proverbs chapter 4, there's a few things that uh, I want to highlight there. I titled my message this morning, Don't Stop Now. Don't stop now. How many times have you been in a situation or circumstances where you're quite proud of yourself because some new things are happening, you've made some choices, 
and, and you're headed in the right direction. And then all of a sudden, opposition started to rise from the most likely of places and most unlikely places. And all of a sudden, you start questioning yourself and you find yourself for the first time in your progress rethinking of what you're doing. Oftentimes that's happened to me when God has taught me things, when I'm learning things from my walk with God and things, and, and I begin to share what God's doing, and all of a sudden opposition starts to rise, and for that moment I begin to start questioning, is it really legitimate? Am I really doing the right thing? And, and, and many times I, I question myself, well, maybe I shouldn't be doing that after all. And, and, and really, it's healthy and it's good because God's doing stuff. But because of what I'm hearing, I question whether I should keep going. I want to tell you, don't stop now. Whenever you go through things, when you're headed in the right direction, there's challenges. Yes, there's always challenges. Challenges is a part of life. And part of maturing and growing is learning to work through those challenges, not to be discouraged or disheartened or disillusioned, but part of life is learning to work through those challenges so that they become a part, wears away things that need to be coming off. But I want to tell you, don't stop. Oftentimes, oftentimes the greatest of opposition is because something is about to shift in your life and the enemy wants to use people around you to sidetrack you in what God wants to do. I want to tell you, don't stop. You made a mistake in your life. You, you really messed up. You burnt up. You blew a tire. Don't stop. Don't stop. You're going through some struggles. You have decisions to make and people are, are telling you one thing and you're hearing all kinds of voices. I want to tell you today, don't stop. Don't stop. Challenges are norm. Opposition will always rise up. In fact, any time you make a decision, there's an opportunity or a, a, a picture that someone is not going to like it. I want to tell you, don't stop. In Proverbs chapter 4, I'm going to read the first seven chapters, but really I want to focus on one verse. I want to focus on verse 7. But I'm going to read this passage to you. And what, what Proverbs chapter 7, what it, uh, chapter 4, it re, the whole book of Proverbs really talks about the necessity and importance of wisdom and how wisdom works its way through circumstances, how wisdom is learned through skill and, and all those aspects. So it talks a lot about wisdom. Now, when you look at the uh, Webster's Dictionary about wisdom, it talks about you know, knowledge that's, that's really understand and all that kind of stuff. But sometimes wisdom in the Bible doesn't mean the same as wisdom that we have in today's language. And so I want to talk a little bit about wisdom here and how important it is because without wisdom, we really can't succeed in life. Wisdom is a key aspect. And so chapter four of Proverbs starts telling us, starting in verse one, he says, my children, listen to when your father corrects you. Pay attention and learn good judgment. For I'm giving you good guidance. Don't turn away from my instructions. For I too was once my father's son, tenderly loved as my father's only child. Verse 4. My father taught me, take my words to heart and follow my commandments and you will live. And then verse 5, it says, get wisdom. Develop good judgment. Don't forget my words, or turn away from them. Don't turn your back, verse 6, on wisdom. Don't turn your back on wisdom. For she will protect you. Love her, and she will guard you. And then in verse 7 it says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And then he says, And in all you're getting, get understanding. Why I chose that, that, that verse to focus on the verse is because sometimes we can be inundated with information. We can have information about all kinds of things. We can gain all kinds of knowledge of all kinds of stuff. In fact, if we would just even look at, at where we are technology-wise in our society, in our world, and, and the information that is so readily available to us. 
You can sit right here or listen wherever you are. And as I'm talking, I can use specific words. And while I'm talking, you can do a search on the Internet and Google and find out where all those words are used. Instantaneously, real time. I remember when I was still in school, and I do remember that, you know, there were times that we would take a trip down to the library. It was almost like a fun thing to do. It got you out of the classroom, now we're going to the library. And the first thing we did in the library, before we got to the entrance door, the teacher would say, now, people are here to learn. Quiet. We walk into the library, and the first thing you notice in a library I don't know if they have libraries anymore, I don't know whether it's just computers or not, but it's books on books on books on books on books on books. And if you wanted a specific book, you'd have to go to a little filing cabinet, one of those little cabinets. There's like 30, it seemed like when you were young, there was like 30 million of them. They were just all over there. You know, now I look at them, they look like safety deposit boxes, but they weren't. They were little filing cabinets in there were alphabetical order and you would look for a book you were looking for and then you would flip the card and would tell you where it's found you take that little card and you go down the hall in the hall it seemed like a hall when you're young and you would go through and the teacher would show you okay here's the numbers numbers number there's your book match number match number you pull it out and it's like wow it's amazing I can't imagine if you're doing a science project, needed about 30 books doing that thing, you'd be spending half the day looking at where to look. Well, nowadays, you just have to grab your phone and go do, 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 and you have all the information at your fingertips. No more searching, no more looking, no more matching cards, it's just simply. And now it is so unique, you don't even have to type anymore. Now you can say Surrey. And Surrey says, how can I help you? What's the population in Moldova? The population of Moldova is 12,500 people. Do you have anything else for me to do? No, thank you. You're welcome. It's amazing. What all is at our fingertips, the knowledge that's available to anyone. I can have, get this, this is fun. And I fooled one of my friends this way. I I have a French friend. And um, he, he speaks English too. And you can have an app on your phone that you type in English and it translates in French. I had a whole text conversation with him in French. And I don't know French. But Google helped me. Google Translate helped me. And the funny thing was, is it was out of character for me. And then he texted me back and I did Google Translate. He says, this is amazing. You're talking to me in English and it's translating for you. He didn't, had no idea that I was actually converting it into French and sending it to him. He figured it was translating in the, as it was going from one phone to the next, it was translating. Oh no, I wasn't doing that. One time when I started doing it, he says, man, he says, your French is very good. I said, merci beaucoup. <laughs> he had no idea what I was doing. But the knowledge, the, the information we have, you could sit right now in this auditorium And I could tell you, the first person to look up the word expression, raise your hand. You can do anything. Knowledge is almost limitless. What I want to point out to is, you can have all the knowledge at your fingertips. You can even have the book smarts for whatever it is you're going to do or tests you're going to write. But knowledge alone doesn't transform people's lives. Knowledge alone does not get you from here, from here to here. Proverbs chapter 4 challenges us to go after wisdom. Wisdom in one sense, wisdom in one sense is is skill. For instance, in verse 5, in verse 5 it tells us, Get wisdom. Develop good judgment. Don't forget those words. And then later on it goes on and says, don't turn your back on wisdom. And then verse 7 it says, wisdom is the principal thing. 
The amazing thing about this whole concept of wisdom is he highlights that in verse 7, that wisdom is the principal thing. What's the first thing that comes to my, our mind when we say it's the principal thing? It's the most important. It's where it all starts. It's where it begins. Principle means that everything else is secondary. This is, this is important. This is, this is the goal. So he says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get it. The interesting thing here, wisdom used here in this context speaks of skill and know-how. For an example, how many have watched sports commentators on television? Man, alive, are they knowledgeable? They can tell you plays, they can tell you what errors happened and all these kind of things. The amazing thing is most of them, a good percentage of them, have never played the sport at a professional level. Never. Sports commentators. You know another one that, that, that really, we're talking about skill and, 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 and know-how. Not only, armchair, armchair quarterbacks. Man, alive. Ooh, better one, better than this. Backseat drivers. Yeah. <laughs> you know the problem with backseat drivers is? You want to really know the problem is? They're not always in the back. Mm. Sometimes they're right beside you. Are you getting my point? They're knowledgeable. That was a red light, you know. Yeah, I, I seen that. Yeah, yeah. You know the speed limit is only 100? Yep, I do. You know that you're supposed to stop at that stop sign? Yep. You know that you're just on and on, right? Knowledgeable. All the knowledge in the world. All the know-how. All the skill. Or another one is, is, is know-it-all bystanders. You know when something's going on, you always have a commentator. And they haven't really, they don't have a clue what's going on, but they have understanding. It happens to pastors all the time. It happens to people that are stepping on leadership. It happens all the time. We have, oh, we got armchair quarterbacks. We got sports commentators. We got people that just would, if I had the opportunity, I would just do it so different. And you step out of the way and you let them have the opportunity to do this. Hmm, what's your problem? You had all the answers. See, it's different. Having skill and knowing how to apply that skill and be experienced in it is very, very different. What's my point? My point is, it starts with skill. It starts with know-how. The amazing thing is when, when, when the author tells us that wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get it. You know what amazes me? Wisdom is something that doesn't go after you. You have to go after it. Get it. Get wisdom. It says, in wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get it. Go after it. Many times we can, you know, we, we, we want, I'm a firm believer that truth has got to transform us or it's really just endless, meaningless truth. If truth doesn't transform us, it's really no point in having. It's like having all the knowledge of how to do things, but really not doing anything with it. God intends when his truth is given and experiences, he wants us to apply it to our life so it changes the course of our life. Doesn't mean we're perfect, no, but he's constantly changing the course of our life. And he challenges us to go after wisdom, to get wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing, go after it. Let me get back to knowledge and experience here again. We can make fun of quarterbacks and, you know, backseat drivers and, or side-by-side -side drivers or whatever. You know, we can laugh about that kind of stuff, but there's a difference let me give you as an example. I'm, I'm a trained soldier. I served 11 years in the military. I've been trained how to fight, how to defend, how to do certain things. I've been trained. I can give you the knowledge base of what I've learned. But you know the difference between me and a, and a, and a, and a combat vet? I've never been in combat. I've never had to consciously make the decision to do what I was trained to do. I can give you a seminar 
on military conduct. I can give you seminar on battle tactics. I can give you, I can give you seminars on, on, on gear and how important gear is and things like that. But when I stand beside a vet that served and come back from Afghanistan, his knowledge base is based on something that he's had to work through, decide, and put it to practice. I want to venture to tell you this. The most powerful Christian is not the one with all the stories, all the, all the, all the know-how. The most powerful Christian is the one that's been transformed by the very stories he or she is speaking from. I don't ever, listen to me church, I don't ever want to give you ideals for the sake of ideals, but rather I want to bring out the truth of God so that it can resonate with you and transform who you are. And the beautiful thing of it is we're all in different areas and different processes and we can celebrate the fact that God is real and he's still changing us and it doesn't matter the difficulties I face in front of me, those things will change eventually because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I don't know about you, but that's worth getting excited about. That's worth highlighting. And I don't want to focus on weaknesses. I want to focus on the strengths that God's put in your life and where he's taking you. The greatest influence is not highlighting where weaknesses are. The greatest influence is saying, that's not who you are. Watch God work. Wisdom is the principal thing, but we have to go, at, go after it. The amazing thing is, can you bring up that verse once more? I'm glad he doesn't stop there. Look carefully to that. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore, get it. He doesn't stop there. Notice what he says. He says, and. I, you know, it's amazing. I did a study on the word and. Can I just I get a find here? And. A-N-D. I didn't even spell that wrong. And. Oh, where did I put it? I am all over the map here. And. There we are. And is used as a function word to indicate connection or addition. Isn't that neat? Every time you use the word and, you're, 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 you're bringing one thought together with another one. In other words, the thought is not complete because there's a second part to it. See, I could be an English teacher sometime. I, you know, you, you, you would mark yes on that, I would pass you. He doesn't stop there. Bring it up once more. I, I just like to see the wording because it's really good. Wisdom is the principal thing. It is, the, it is our focus. It's our attention. It's, it's where it all starts. Therefore, get it. In other words, it's not going to come to you. You're going to have to go after it. So we, just leave it up there for a second. We have to stop using the excuse that other people are hindering us because we have to take responsibility for ourselves. Okay? You get it. But if so-and-so, no, 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 you get it. But what, no, 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 you get it. We allow too many people on the outside of our life to influence us in the direction that we want to go because, get it, get it, get it. He doesn't stop there and he says, and. So now he's taking one thought, pulling it together with another one. They're related in all and in all you're getting. So he's, now that's good, thank you very much. And all you're getting. So he's acknowledging the fact that they are going after it. While you're going after it, you need to understand this. And all you're getting, get understanding. In essence, what he's saying is the pursuit of knowledge is one thing. But you need understanding of that truth in order to change your life. And all you're getting, get understanding. What's the difference between knowledge and understanding? They're related. You can have knowledge without understanding, but you cannot have understanding without knowledge. Does that make sense? You can know something, but when you understand it, you not only know it, but you practice it. So here he says, in all you're getting, get understanding. What's the difference? Knowledge points or, or knowledge alone puffs up. Ooh, just ask me that question. I have the answer. Understanding brings transformation. 
They're not waiting for the spotlight to let people know what they know. Their lifestyle is a sermon in itself because their character is affected by it. Knowledge itself points to self. Look at me. Look what I can do. Look what I can say. Look what I can come up with. Understanding speaks life and brings freedom. Understanding does. Why? Because you're a testimony. Your life's the testimony. Knowledge alone divides. Knowledge alone divides. Why? Because it creates, oh, you haven't arrived. You haven't reached my understanding. Or you haven't reached my knowledge base. We get confused sometimes. My understanding. No, 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 no. It's not understanding. It's knowledge. It divides. It sometimes divides on purpose. But what does understanding do? Understanding births hope and creates optimism. Hmm. It isn't the end of the world. No. So what happened in your life and how did you push through? It creates optimism. How many in this place need optimism in one point in their life or another? All of us to be raising hands. We're always in situations where we need optimism. We need hope. Well, understanding brings that. Knowledge alone stops a person from learning. Stops a person from learning. You know why? Because knowledge thinks you've arrived. What happened then is always the same. No. Understanding. Understanding creates hunger for more. It creates hunger for more. You're not content with what you do know. Because you do know what you know, there's more to know. It creates hunger for more. When he was writing, get wisdom. Don't turn your back on wisdom. Get wisdom. It's the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. Our skill and understanding and know-how. I, I, oh, it's so key. I, would, I wouldn't trust if I had a plane and I had a pilot. I would not trust my pilot to fly the plane that all he has is book smarts. Right. Nope. The first thing I'd ask you, ask them if I needed a plane. The first thing I'd ask is how many years of experience have you had flying? Well, you know, I haven't had any experience, but man, I tell you, I've studied, and I've looked, and I've watched, and man, I imagined, and you know, I passed all the courses, and, and all the exams, and I, I, how many years of experience do you have? Well, I don't have any, okay? You could be a co-pilot, but I need to hire an experienced pilot. Why? Because I'm going to trust him with my very life. Not based on his book smarts, but based on his experiences. When my wife and I were in Haiti for three weeks, we were with some missionaries in Haiti, and they, were, they had a ship. They, they, they operated out of a ship, and, and um, we went into a storm. And, and I got scared, because it was not looking good at all. And uh, he told us where to stand and where to position ourselves to hit the waves and all this other kind of stuff. And then he said this, I've been through worse. Oh, oh, that's just like, okay, he's been through worse. In other words, he's been experienced and he's faced them before. And when he said, I've experienced worse, it's like, okay, it's, I'm going to be okay. That's the difference between knowledge and understanding. A captain of a ship can say, I've learned everything I need to learn. But in the real world, learning is not enough. We got to have understanding. A Christian that knows is not effective. But a Christian who understands changes culture. A person in the workplace that knows all the answers sometimes causes more damage than good. Because sometimes we have to call someone that has experience. And sometimes their experience tells them by what they hear and what they see, they know what the problem is. Where meanwhile, the next guy is still looking at the manual. The manual is important because the person with experience could not understand it without the manual. 
But he's not limited to the manual because he's put it to work. And that's what the intent of the manual always is, is so we put it to work in our life. And that's what excites me about the truth of God, is it's just not a manual for us to learn and be able to answer questions and quote verses, but it's actually something that infiltrates my life and changes my character. And when it becomes understanding, I can come alongside someone else and give them the same hope, the same optimism, the same freedom, and the same life that I've experienced, not just read experienced does this make sense (laughs) understanding is the ability to sift through and then apply those things in the right way I would pay if I was a business owner and not unionize because you can't do that I would pay based on your level of experience and your understanding than your book smarts. I look at it this way. Book smarts are apprentices. They're learning from those that have gotten understanding. That's why I think I had a hard time learning. Because learning for me it had to do something. And if it wouldn't do anything, it's meaningless. Who cares? You know what? Math is great, but we have calculators that can calculate all kinds of mathematics. Why learn it? That's not, I'm not talking prophetically here. I'm just saying in my mind how it works through, right? So naturally, I didn't care about math. You know, you, you, you tell me about, you know, something that happened 50 million years ago. I'm, if it was 50 million years ago, I'm just using it. I'm really exaggerating, okay? I'm exaggerating. How does that affect me now? It doesn't. Meaningless. I think that's why I struggle learning. Now, that doesn't mean I'm the best learner, because I'm not. I'm not the best student. I'm not. I'm not the best person to be exact. I'm not, because I value people that know knowledge. And that drink and study and do all these things and have this wealth of understanding. I've always won. If it doesn't affect me, it's no... Just how I'm produced myself, I guess. I don't know. That's why when you're going to teach me something, I want to know that it's alive for you too. Because if it's not alive for you, I'm not going to pay attention. Because it's not meaningful. When it transforms you, you got my attention. I wonder sometimes how lives would be turned around and changed if you would teach from an understanding perspective. Walking, breathing, living, powerful, infused testimony of a transformed life in Jesus. It doesn't change. You can be in a setting like this where everybody expects to hear truth. But I want to tell you something. The real world wants to see truth. And that's why it's important that we don't just preach ideals and good things, but we preach from a perspective of understanding where it's real. Because when you go into the world, the real world, this isn't the real world, this is, this is safe, you know, this is, everybody knows some of the lingo and the jargon, but when you're outside, when no one knows the lingo or the jargon, when your testimony is so powerful, it transforms people around you, that's the message of the cross. That's the message of the gospel. Let's not just fill up buildings and fill up stadiums for the sake of filling them up. We've, yeah. got, to, we've got to make the transition of preaching the truth with experiencing and understanding the truth. Because when it's understood, it changes their lives. Oftentimes, I think we can be guilty by getting people to come to our services and experience it or, or hear the truth. And, and that's good enough. Hearing the truth is wonderful. No, it's not. They need to be understood. They need to be understanding. You and I can never live anything that we don't understand. It's like going to France and, and looking at the signs and it tells you exactly where to go. It's what's your problem. It's full of information. But unless I under, don't understand them, I'm going to be going like this. 
Or you're in a restaurant looking at the menu and you're just like this. Does anybody speak English here? Why? Because you don't understand. And sometimes we substitute knowledge for understanding and we think celebrate knowledge. Knowledge is a principal thing. But in all you're getting, get understanding. It's amazing. We grow up in church all our life and we have experiences and we have different things. It could be good or bad. The funny thing is we think everybody else knows that and has those experiences, but they don't. Me living my faith. Ups and downs, round corners, flat tires and all. That's a powerful testimony because it's real. Because it's real. You see, you tell somebody you're a Christian, most often they think you're a goody-goody and you think you're better than anybody else. And you're against this, 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 this. But when you don't have to tell anybody you're a Christian, you live the reality of the kingdom of heaven. They're wondering why you're different. One, you don't judge them. You don't hold a sign. You don't put stickers all over the place. You're going to hell, doing this, doing that, all kinds of stuff. No, because you're being Jesus. And you know what the amazing thing is? The more I watch Jesus, the more I'm attracted to him, the less I'm attracted to the theology of the church. Can I be honest? Jesus had something about him that made religious people turn and run and be angry because he wasn't about the doctrine. He was about the transformed understanding and experiencing God. And when that happened, people were attracted to that. You can tell the kids are having fun. <laughs> Could you turn it down a little bit? We're having... Understanding. How much value do you give understanding? There's times where I open up the scripture and I want to study because I'm doing a devotional or I'm doing something. How many times do I... You know, I'm not just into reading. I'm just not into reading. I was taught you read. You read every day. You read. But if there's no understanding, it's pointless. I don't just open up the scripture out of habit because I want to read. Sometimes I don't read at all. Sometimes I don't. Because when I know when I open it up, I want to have understanding. I really do. Do I understand everything? No. But man, I'm sure press into it. And you know what the neat thing is? The Holy Spirit brings understanding. It's like, oh, i never seen it before. You know what's amazing thing is? Is sometimes I can preach and I can study a passage five years ago. And I come to that, five, that passage again thinking I've already dug enough out of it, seen enough out of it. And I get into it and I realize... Oh, there's more. There's more. That's why the message says, don't stop now. Don't ever stop. When I get 95 or 99 and I'm walking like this and I'm thinking, I want understanding and grow. I want to learn and continue to encounter God and have relevant experiences where people can encounter Jesus. And the word of God comes alive in me, not because I'm religious. <laughs> Uh, that word is just, oh. oh. Well, I can quote 300 scriptures. Good for you. You don't impress me. Nor do you impress the outside people. Inside people you might impress. Oh, it, oh wonderful. When your life is transformed, church. There's no amount of preaching you need to do. There's no lot of talking you need to do. There's no lot of five spiritual laws you need to be doing. None of that stuff because when you're walking, the kingdom is coming out of you. The kingdom is coming out of you. Think of it. The, the tangible heaven's kingdom is meant to be let loose here on the earth. That's why when Jesus said... Hey, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He's not telling, feel sorry for yourself and feel guilty and feel bad. No, he was saying, change the way you think because a new kingdom has arrived and it's very different than the old. 
You see, the church has always said that Jesus was crucified because of our sins. Yes. He took our sin upon us. On us. Yes, he did. But he was crucified out of anger and much bitterness and rage because he claimed to be someone that they thought he wasn't. When the Jewish people nailed him to the cross, they weren't saying they were taking my sins. They were mad they wanted to kill him because he was a threat to their religious ideals. We know he did it because he took everything upon himself that was ours. But they did it because of anger and frustration and bitterness. And we want to stop. We want to, we want to put an end to what he's saying. When they were so blind that when they had understanding, even, even the guy on, on the one side of him turned and looked at him and said, Hey, remember me when you go to paradise. Because he had understanding. And then even Jesus said this. He said this. It blows me away. He said that, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Can I translate that for us? Father, forgive them. They don't have any understanding of what's happening. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be ignorant. I want to learn. I want to keep learning, keep growing, keep in the midst of difficulty, in the midst of burnout, in the midst of not burnout, wipe out, flat tires, whatever else we go through in life. <laughs> wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Amen? Let's pray.